lead is, there's a lot of evils out there in the world and evil is normally associated with people. But it's evil. I get a call from a confidential source in the health department. They handed over this state report of about 167 pages. And there were two pages in the report that dealt with lead poisoning. And Hillsborough County in particular led the entire state of Florida in lead poisoning. And it said that there were the battery sites was a key contributor to the problem. Inside, you would think it's dirt, but it's not dirt. What I know now, it was lead. There was this lead factory, the only lead factory in the state of Florida, and it had terribly overexposed its workers for decades to high levels of dangerous toxins. Some of the workers were inadvertently taking the dust home and they ended up poisoning their children. Early on, um, one of the sources said, hey, you should talk to my former manager. Um, he worked in the furnace department and his child has a blood lead level and autism, and he thinks that they're related. We pull up and it's the middle of the day and we knock on the door. His wife answered. We told her that we were from the newspaper and that we wanted to talk about lead exposure at Gopher. And she immediately screamed and and start to just cry. And that's when I invited them in and we sat down. And when I started to tell them my story, it felt unreal. On her counter were a stack of medical records from her lead poisoned son. From autism to ADHD, behavior, outbursts. Doctor's offices are our normal. Carrying around a medical binder with all of my kids' information is normal. That burned into all of us the true need to get out here and figure out what was happening. To know that somebody was finally looking into it. It had taken so long. I never thought in a million years that this story would ever have been told. The story, which ultimately took about two years, it was based on the word and the interviews of well over 100 workers. We had gathered maybe close to 100,000 internal records. And we eventually built a database of close to 15 years of air lead levels inside the building. And on top of that, we also had a database of blood lead levels of workers. We now could see when people were hired, they were healthy. And within two or three weeks, the lead is stacking up in their blood. And then as their levels are rising now, they're falling out. Probably the most shocking thing was um, just the levels of lead that the workers were exposed to. They were so many times, hundreds of times, like the federal limit. These filters protect up to 25 or 2300. Uh, and on many, many days, the levels were 10,000, 20,000, 30,000, sometimes 200,000. 
we each became um, certified lead inspectors for um, the story. So we learned how to take soil samples. We set up rings around the factory, moving out like 500 meters each time. And we took samples around it so that we could see if the lead content of the soil you know, went up or down with distance to the factory. And ultimately found that the exposures that were inside the plant had also expanded to the community. Without Corey, Eli, and Rebecca knocking on the front door, this story would have never seen the light of day. And for that, I will be eternally grateful. When you have a newspaper, you have like a team of advocates for your community. If we weren't here on the ground doing this reporting with the Tampa Bay Times, we would have never been able to move the mountains and move the needle to actually get changes happen. You guys are giving us our future back because of this story. There is hope.